Adventures of Hurry Man. I wonder what today's episode is about. Clifton by the Sea looks an awful lot like Clifton in the Desert, or at least Clifton on the back lot. It's not deserted. There's a guy in a biohazard suit. Biohazard suit? From what we can see, he keeps himself occupied going around breaking people's windows. This is the strangest thing. What's that? Well, you've heard me mention Mrs. Tazy. Your nurse? Oh, yes. Every year for my birthday, she sends me a little gingerbread man. Well, that's cute. I tried calling her to thank her for it, but, I, but she doesn't answer the phone. That wouldn't be unusual, except that nobody in the whole town answers. There's nothing wrong with the lines, there's just no people on the other end of them. Look, Lois, it's only about an hour's drive up to Clifton. Why don't you take a run up there? Would you come with me? Sure, hang up and let's go. The guy in the funny suit is still breaking windows. That mist must be why he's wearing the bio suit. Too bad the poor dog didn't have one. Clark and Lois drive into an empty town. Clark spots the dog. He's dead. Doesn't seem to have been hurt. He's not an old dog. Who lives here? This is Dr. Jessup's house. I used to come here when I was a little girl. What was that? Someone moaned inside. What they find inside isn't too surprising. Clark. It's Dr. Jessup. Let's stand here and look at him and talk for a while before we go see about helping him. Good help should not be rushed. The doctor mutters something about pills in the top desk drawer. But there's something else in the drawer, too. Two somethings, in fact. Why does he need a gun and a gas mask? Thank you. I merely suffered a slight fainting spell. A fainting spell, Doctor? Yes. A fainting spell. He's not buying your act, Doctor. Try, I've got the vapors. He says, who sent for you? Lois says, nobody, literally. Nobody answered the phone. I came up to see why. Take my advice. Leave Clifton at once. There's nothing here to interest the newspapers. I wouldn't be too sure about that. Take my word for it, and take my advice. Leave Clifton at once. The fake mustache decrees that you leave Clifton at once. Obey the mustache, for it is alive, and it is your master. And now I have to see one of my patients, so if... What you... patient? The town's deserted. Nobody answers the telephone. What's wrong here, Dr. Jessup? Well, just because someone chooses not to answer the telephone, it doesn't follow that there's anything wrong. But nobody... Please step aside. I must go to Miss Tazy's. Well, is she, is she sick? She might very well be dead. If he thinks two prize-winning reporters are going to leave town after that... Mrs. Tazy, I'm so glad to see you. I've been so worried about you. I couldn't get you by phone, and Dr. Jessup said... Why, Lois, what are you doing here in Clifton? I believe she was in the process of explaining that. Oh, this is Clark Kent. I've told you about him. How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Tazy? I'm glad to see you're looking well. Me? Always fine. Nothing's ever wrong with me. Dr. Jessup led us to believe otherwise. Well, at your time of life, Matilda, especially with that cough you had... Cough? Oh, oh yes, the cough. Gee, that was subtle. I hope Clark picked up on all the nonverbal cues. Well, it's almost gone now, except when the fog's bad. It's going to be bad tonight, Lois, so you'd better be gone before it comes in. You know you always had a weak chest. I? I'll fix you a nice cup of tea, you and Mr. Kent, and I'll give you some of my blueberry muffins, and you can be on your way before dark. Not that I'm trying to get rid of you, but here, let me start your car for you. Why are you trying to get rid of us? Why? I'm not trying yes, to get rid of you. Yes, you are, and so is Dr. Jessup. He practically ordered us to leave Clifton. What's going on around here? Where are all the people? I didn't see a soul on the streets. The houses and the stores are all deserted. Mrs. Tazy names off a couple of people, but Dr. Jessup cuts her off. Hey, just a moment, Mrs. Tazy. Who else were you about to say? 
Who else besides you four remained here in Clifton? Why, uh, Doc Jessup's dog. Is it a red setter? Yes. It's dead. Ranger? Dead? Yeah, right about the time you had that fainting spell. You know, the one that broke your window? He's under a hedge outside your door. But what I want to know is, where are all the other people? What's happened? Closer to the ground. What are you talking about? You've got to tell me. Something terrible is going on in Clifton. I know it. Lois is going to go in for a cup of tea while Clark wants to examine the doctor's dog. Curiosity once killed the cat, young man. Was the cat too close to the ground, too? He finds another gas mask in Mrs. Tazy's basket of flowers. He tells Lois, find out all you can, but don't drink any tea. True to form, he won't tell her why. He's the man. She should do what he says. That's the natural order of things. I'm sure Lois understands that. Clark has found a surprise. That dog just don't get up and walk away, Dr. Jessup. I admit I was a little disappointed when he didn't say, well, dog gone. I'm quite aware of that. Therefore, someone must have taken it away. Why? I can't imagine. Maybe I can. That dog was removed to keep anyone from finding out it had been gassed. Yeah, poison gas is heavier than air. It hangs close to the ground, like where dogs live. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. I saw a gas mask in your desk. Mrs. Tazy has one, too. So you were snooping, eh? Going through my desk. He was getting the pills you told him to get to save your life, you ungrateful wretch. Now, wait a minute. I ought to have you arrested. I will, too, unless you leave Clifton at once. Who's going to arrest him? There's nobody here. The doctor goes inside. Clark starts poking around the bushes and finds some odd footprints. Do something. Hi. Yes, dead dog. Is that so? What kind of a dog might it be? A red setter? Yours? No, it belonged to Dr. Jessup. Ranger dead? Well, that's too bad. That's Peter Godfrey. He and his son Alvin have the drugstore across the street. He says the town dried up when the oyster beds stopped producing. He and Alvin are getting ready to leave, too. Clark mentions the dog's body disappearing, and he says, maybe Alvin saw it and buried it. Let's ask him. Dr. Jessup setter died, Alvin. Oh, that's too bad. And the body disappeared just a little while ago from right there. Did you see it, Alvin? No. I've been in the back of the store working for the past hour or so. Oh, by the way, Father, that prescription you were filling is all dissolved. It'll spoil if you let it stand. Oh, yeah, so it will. I'm glad to met you, Mr. Kent. Who's it for? That sounded like code to me, but this town has me suspicious. <laughs> Shooting at, Miss Daisy. A rabbit. Clark has had enough of the tall tales. He says somebody is going around spreading poison gas, murdering people. Who is it? She doesn't know, but she suddenly turns scared. Lois. Where's Lois? Wasn't she here? No. You mean you ain't seen her? Not since I left her here. Where is she? I thought she went to get you. I was at Dr. Jessup's. I came back by the road and I didn't see her. Oh, my. If she went the other way, where he is. She was always such a headstrong girl. Which other way? Where he comes from, the sea. He finds Lois in a cave digging at something. Clark, you scared me. Well, that makes us even. What do you mean by going off on your own? Well, I like that. What am I supposed to do, sit around and twiddle my thumbs while you go out and wrap up a page one story? Oh, what have you got here? Well, I don't know. I saw where the sand was disturbed. I started digging and found these. Looks like a piece of drill core. Some prospectors use a special drill called a core drill to get down into the rock and pull up a sample. Those things are the result. Clark thinks he knows what's in them, but of course he won't tell Lois. He wants to send her somewhere safe while he takes them to be analyzed. She's refusing because she's convinced he just wants to steal the story in the credit. Clark says, I don't care about that stuff, but it's dangerous in Clifton. Now you will go to Havenhurst and wait. I'll wait. In Havenhurst, you promise? I promise. Good girl. Nothing. She never said Havenhurst. She said, I promise and I'll wait. She's much better at this than he is. He runs off and she runs back into the cave.
Sit there and watch him. Don't stand up and run or anything like that. That would be cheating. Come on, dude. You can fit a dress better than that. What kind of seamstress are you? He has company. Hold your hands. You're all through murdering folks now. The gang's all here, which means the guy in the suit can only be one person. Alvin Godfrey. So that's who it is. Get that mask off your face, Doc. You won't need it no more now. But I don't understand. Why did he do this? There's a deposit of hydrazite in that cave. I just learned this in Washington. What is this high hydro... Hydrazite. It's a rare mineral used in making the hydrogen bomb. Hydrazite is unrefined upsidasium. Upsidasium? It's a huge deposit worth who knows how many millions. Peter and Alvin concocted this insane scheme of using poison gas, that's probably what that prescription was that Alvin mentioned, to chase everyone out of town, and then they'd have all that lovely upsidate, I mean hydrazite for themselves. The fact that there's probably enough to make the whole town as rich as the Sultan of Brunei wouldn't occur to them, because to the greedy person, there's never enough. Clark is changing the town sign to reflect two fewer inhabitants. Well, how did you know you weren't there? A uh, little bird told me. And if you're a good girl, someday I'll tell you who that little bird is. And move over. I'll drive. After all, why should you know those things and him not know? You're just a girl. I'll bet you don't even drive good. Let me do it. I'm the man. Until next time. Video by Harry Harrison. Audio by Morris Morrison. Wardrobe and makeup by Alice Allison. Your announcer has been Peter Peterson.